welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, your channel for super easy, no-nonsense advice on how to declutter and organise your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organisers Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 133 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. In today's episode, I'm talking to Judith Kolberg, who pioneered the Atlanta-based company Fileheads Professional Organizers in 1989. In 1990, she founded the National Study Group on Chronic Disorganization, the precursor to the Institute for Challenging Disorganization. Judith is credited with launching an entire field of professional organizing, specifically dedicated to addressing the needs of individuals who are challenged by chronic disorganization. Respected by her peers as an industry futurist and thought leader, Judith has detected many trends in the field, including digital estate planning, ADD and disorganization, disaster preparedness, and the insights into hoarding behavior. Her innovative organizing methods are described in her books that have sold over half a million copies in five countries, and her depth of experience and humorous delivery has made her a popular international speaker. So welcome, Judith. (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Well, this is great. I am Honored to say the least. I'm not going to lie, listeners. When I saw Judith at first, when we kind of started talking, I was like, I feel like I'm in the presence of royalty. I mean, (laughs) you are. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you so much. Oh, pleasure. You're you're climbing right up there in the ranks of royalty, too. Oh, (laughs) well, we're working on it, working on it. Now, Judith, we know that many professional organizers worldwide listen to this show, too, and they probably expect us to talk about challenging this organization, since that is the field you are renowned for. But I have asked you to talk about why everybody needs a digital estate plan today, and I want to explain why to our listeners. So I, of course, had heard from Judith, and I was delighted that she was one of the speakers at the NAPO conference in Atlanta back in 2016. And her topic was the digital estate plan. And to be honest, it just blew my mind. Both the content and the delivery was spot on. And it was the first time I actually heard anyone talk about a digital estate plan. And since it's such an important topic, I'm delighted you're here to tell our listeners all about it, because... Everybody needs to have one, but I don't think anybody realizes it. So (laughs) let's start at the beginning, Judith. What is a digital estate plan? You know, I think you can answer this best by asking yourself, what if you what if you suddenly died, you know, or you became incapacitated? And the question is, you know, would your your spouse or your executor or your power of attorney, would they even know? about the existence of what I call these invisible accounts that we now have. You know, this stuff that's online and in the cloud. And actually we have often no statements for them. There's no paper trail like there used to be in the old days. And I'm not advocating that we go backwards, don't get me wrong. Mm. But it's just that there's no way for anybody else to track them if there isn't some tangible record of them. So that's in essence what a digital estate plan is. And it's also valuable because we we have all of these, uh, it's kind of a a web of invisible transactions that we do, right? So you move money from your checking account, it pays for bills online, and then you have money that goes from your savings account into your uh, retirement account, you have investments account, and there's all this money in motion. And again, There's no tracking of it unless you're handling it yourself or you have, you know, an accountant who's doing that for you. But that's not going to help the people who are going to step in for you when you're incapacitated or, you know, when you die for your estate. So it serves that purpose, too. And then finally, the digital estate plan is all about, you know, we live in this world of passwords and codes and login information and all of that stuff. And we're so paranoid about protecting it and so forth and so on that we forget 
that nobody else knows these things. <laughs> and there has to be some way for someone else in your life to learn these things in a safe, in a safe way. So that's what a digital estate plan does. It makes your information that's now completely invisible, more accessible so that if something happens for you, uh, you know, that you can um, get your ducks in a row. Okay. So my, my next question was, why do people need one? But you kind of already answered my question by saying, it's especially when you get incapacitated or you suddenly pass away or when you are passing away and you've not people in your family have known you're going to pass away, but still everybody is so busy with other things. They kind of forget to ask all these questions, right? Yeah. I mean, here you are, your family is, you know, grieving your loss, right? Planning a funeral. And meanwhile, there's uh, all this information out there that I call our information afterlife, right? Mm -hmm. It goes on without us. We may have <laughs> perished, but it's still out there. Your social media accounts are still up. Your email is still up. Your websites are still up. This stuff is still out there and it's vulnerable to, you know, cyber crime, especially when your family is preoccupied with grief. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason to have it. And that's when to have it. It's kind of too late <laughs> when you're incapacitated or you die. You, you definitely want to do it now. So I'm especially glad that you're bringing this up for the public now. This is really important to do preemptively. It's interesting because a lot of people are, I think, afraid to talk about what happens when you pass away. And my mother, she um, is, is a very organized woman. And I think I know everything that I've learned, I know from her. And the, the, the funeral company was very surprised that she went, she wanted to sort out her funeral. And those there, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear. Are you ill? Is, and then she was like, no, absolutely fine. But I just want to sort myself out. That's right. I and like your <laughs> she, yeah, well, I like her too. I mean, she, you know, and it was just, so she's made this whole folder already with like a yeah, big yeah. cross on the back with kind of, this is the paperwork. Here's where my gas, water, electricity is and all of those things, because yeah. she's kind of ahead of the game. But a lot of people find it very difficult to talk about these things, don't they? Yeah. You know, it raises the, it's kind of like making a will, right? It raises the issue of your mortality, you know, oh, this isn't going to happen. I mean, obviously death is going to happen to you, but people don't think that they might also get incapacitated and then they won't be able to handle their affairs and nobody else can handle their affairs because they don't know where anything is or how to access it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it really is a question of pre preparedness. So I really like your mom a lot for that. That's a great virtue. She'd make a terrific professional organizer, I'm sure. Yeah. And, you know, it's, there's a lot of little things in our life that, we don't want to talk about, we don't want to think about having to pass things on, you know, to other people. We sort of want to play that out to the very end. We do this with our, with our tangible possessions, but there's also all of this virtual possessions that you have. For instance, I'm the, I'm my family's genealogist, right? So I have a, a lot of, it's not commercially valuable, but a lot of important information for my family that's in Ancestry.com, for instance. And I'd love to pass that on. I don't want to think about it now, but I'd like one of my nieces to pick it up and take it, take it over. But they're not going to be able to do that unless I, I tell them that even the account exists and what's in there and how to get into it, right? Yeah. So it isn't just about death and dying. It's really about also about legacy, you know, what you want to leave to other people as well, in my opinion. Mm, mm. Interesting, because, of course, with decluttering and organizing, we're so focused on stuff. Yeah. And I think that's why this topic interests me so much, because there's so much more than stuff that needs to be sorted. Yeah, absolutely, there is. So just to extend the example of the family genealogist. So my mother's father was murdered by the mafia when she was seven years old, right? And so nobody's ever seen a picture of this man or the account of his, his murder or anything. Now I have all that stuff now because of the internet. Yeah. And um, I'd love to pass that story on and the history of the family on. That's not the only history of the family. <laughs> There's other parts of the family, you know? And so I'm very, very glad that I have a digital estate plan in place that captures that and all of my financial accounts and, you know, it sounds very scary to put it all in one place, 
But that's also the function of a digital estate plan to get all this passwords and access information and login information in one place. I work with clients and they, they have this stuff, but they have it all over the place. They got it on post-it notes. You know, they've got it on a document with their will. They've got it online. They've got a special cloud place that they have it, but this brings it all together in one spot. So does the digital estate plan then replace a will or can you include your digital estate plan in a will or is it kind of two different things together so how does that work how does it fit in no it doesn't replace a will i think of it as a complement to a will okay right so you know you, you use your will to designate an executor you use your will to identify your beneficiaries you use your will to say who's going to get what right of your tangible assets. So you can use your digital estate plan to say who's going to get what of your, you know, your digital assets. You know, do you want to, do you want your eBay account to be carried on? Who's going to do that? Who are you going to leave? Uh, I have, for instance, I have royalties from my books that you mentioned before, and they come into a special account. Well, if nobody knows about that account, then what's going to happen to those royalties? Mm -hmm. So it's a place to kind of, you can even uh, use it to leave notes for your executor on your digital estate plan. Like a lot of these social media accounts have mechanisms now where if you pass, you can have an authorized representative say, oh, you know, put a memorial page up on Facebook for three months for this individual. Or no, 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 my wishes, my last, my final wishes are for you to take it down. I want it completely taken down, right? Or gee, it'd be nice if the family got together and made a memorial video of my life and put it up there on you know, Instagram or Pinterest or whatever. Um, so you can have your wishes like you do in a will mm -hmm. designated on a digital estate plan. Okay. And do you also then advice to have a separate digital estate plan executor or something or well it's called a digital executor okay. actually and it could be the same person as your regular executor mm -hmm. but there's some qualities a digital executor has that maybe your executor executor might not have uh so like they must be internet savvy now my brother who i adore is my executor but he's very old school He's not going to know how to take down a Facebook page or a website or put up a memorial page or all this technical kind of internet stuff. So, you know, I think they should work together, the executor and the digital executor. Mm -hmm. And you can designate your digital executor in your will, but it's not a legal entity like an executor is. The digital executor has no rights under any law at all for any property or the disposition of any property, tangible or digital. So that's a big difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So, okay. You've got, we've kind of gone through a couple of the things like what do you include in a digital estate plan, mm -hmm. but can we dive a little bit more into that? Because I'm not thinking my brain is like working over it. I'm thinking, Oh yeah, I've got social media accounts and I've got a random, uh, Pinterest thing that I opened once and I'm thinking about bank statements and I, so is there yeah. some sort of well here's some clues here's yeah. some clues to what to how you know what should go on the digital estate plan so if you have any invisible automated transactions flying around that's a good clue to things to put on your digital estate plan because that's the that's the that's what you want to make visible yeah is all of that stuff so the word automated should give you a clue. And then anything for which you've developed a profile, you know, how you go into a site and you, and you purchasing site or any kind of website and you develop a profile, anything that you've developed a profile on is subject to cyber criminality. So you want to record it on your digital estate plan. So those are two ways to know what goes on there. Other stuff you can put on there. I mean, you know, people now have a password, password protected cars. They have keyless car pads where they type in the code. Who's going to get into your car? <laughs> If you don't, how's someone going to get into your car? You might put that on your digital estate plan. The pin number that unlocks your phone, your cell phone, yeah. or your laptop for that matter. 
all of those kinds of codes can go. And we're going to talk a, a bit about security because I know your your listeners are already getting the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. She must be nuts, this woman. It's got all my account numbers on there now and all my login information and all my password. You know, it could ruin my life if this falls in, into the wrong hands. And so we're going to talk, I suppose, yeah, we're yeah. going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. For Does that sure. answer your question now? Are there other things specifically you want to know about what goes on there? Well, I'm just thinking, I was, I just heard you talk and I was like, this is going to be a very long list because we've it's got be, so, so many yeah. accounts these days everywhere. It could be. Yeah, you know, some accounts just sort of wither on the vine. You've never used them and they're not very active and all that. And so you don't want to get too crazy about it. But I have a client, the, the longest I've ever seen with clients is three pages long okay. of this, you know. But, you know, you might want to think about things like, do you have photographs on Shutterfly? Maybe your family wants access to those photographs. You know, maybe you have music on Spotify, your own music, music that you've created or videos or things like that. Or even who's going to um, get the blogs off of your website. Maybe you have some great blogs that you want to keep, you know, you don't want to lose. So these are, this is all ways to use a digital estate plan. And is it helpful to, especially if you run your own business like we do, to kind of make maybe a digital estate plan for personal and then maybe a separate one for kind of more work and business and things like that? So you kind of can almost like um, categorize it in your head? <laughs> I, you know, I think the whole a point about the digital estate plan, not the whole point, is the centralization yeah. of all of this information. So I advocate for anything that's automated and or you know that we make a profile of or some of the criteria we've discussed, whether it's personal or financial, to go on a digital estate plan. Now there are small business owners who prefer, in fact, to have a separate one, you know, instead of their personal one. These are up to you. I only work with clients to develop the personal ones. I don't do the small business ones because that gets into a lot of issues around technology and redundancy and protecting it. And I'm just like, that's not my thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So yes, let's talk about safety then, because I can feel our listeners who are like either driving or walking around in the supermarket or maybe running across the road going, Oh my word, all this information in one place. This this right. I find this very scary. I know, I know. Um, and in fact, we're taught just the opposite. You know, don't write your passwords down anywhere. Don't share them with anybody. Don't make anything accessible, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think we've, um, again, I, I'm not the kind of person who wants to go backwards to pen and paper or anything like that. But I do think you should build a digital estate plan a hard copy on your hard drive, on your computer, and then you password protect that document with a really strong password. And a really strong password has at least 15 characters made up of letters, numbers, and symbols. And the truth is, have you ever heard, Ingrid, of anybody who's had a Word document or an Excel document broken into? No. In your entire, no, it's very safe. So your password, but you build this document, whether it's a Word document or an Excel document, you can use the proprietary form that I have in my booklet. If you Google digital estate plan, you'll get plenty of different formats to use. Just choose one and fill in all the fields. Password protected. And now the thing is that you, after you build it on your hard drive, you save it to one of these things that, you know, that we have different names for. It doesn't stay on your hard drive. It goes to a thumb drive. Some people call it a flash drive. Some people call it a, a jump drive. There's different names for it. An external storage item. That like device a, US, like that a USB on. stick. Yeah. yeah. And it's the only thing that's on that device. That document, your digital state plan, plus the password to get into it, are on that little tiny thing. And that's what you hand to your executor, right? Or your power of attorney, this gizmo right here. 
You also print out a copy, a hard copy. So in case this thing fails, the, the, uh, the flash drive fails, you have a hard copy of it. And that's what you put with your will and your power of attorney and all your final documents. So a hard copy version of it goes there. It lives instead on an external device, which is handed to your authorized representative. And it's nowhere else. It isn't anywhere else. It can, can't. Now, some people, especially younger people, want their final documents, their will, their power of attorney, and their digital estate plan to live in the cloud in a very safe site encrypted heavily on the cloud. And I think that's fine too. It's really your comfort level, right? So, and you can do both as a matter of fact. You can do this version that I've described with you of safety, or you can do the on the uh, in the cloud one or both. And people ask me, well, what cloud site do you recommend for your final documents where, it be, where they'll really be safe and you can develop an accessible entry system for various authorized representatives. Well, every time I recommend one, it gets hacked or something happens to the site or another site buys it or whatever. So if your listeners want a recommendation for cloud sites, for their um, digital estate plan and other final documents, Google digital estate plan cloud site and you will get the latest and you can pick out one you know that you feel is the most secure mm -hmm. so that's how i handle it with my clients okay and you mentioned um that there's a form uh that people can use so can you can you tell me again exactly where people can find that if they want to use your one how, how is that the best way well, to well inside of um my ebook, which is called Creating Your Digital Estate Plan, is a link mm -hmm. to a form. Okay. And that's the one that I've built. And it's really, it's really like not a big deal form. It has columns that go across and they say name of account, account number, you know, website address, what's the password, what's the user code, what's the security question. Then it has a column for those notes that you and I talked about. So it's very straightforward, easy thing to use. But you will also be able to find a form that's friendly to use if you just Google the words digital estate plan. And you'll get lots of options for forms. Some of them will be Word document forms and some of them will be an Excel spreadsheet form. There's all other kinds of forms as well. So what I'll do, listeners, uh, um, because I have actually read Judith's yeah. digital estate plan book obviously to prepare for today's podcast but also because I'm, I'm interested in it I will put the link to that book in the show notes so if you're interested and you think you know what after listening today I would love to know a little bit more and then you can also find the form that Judith's talking about and of course like I mentioned before Judith has written several books so I will put her name into um, the Amazon the link to Amazon to all her books in case you're interested in other sure, topics and, and I made it really inexpensive and the book is very easy to read it's just like 20 pages or something it's yeah it's very entertaining, it's informative and, uh, and useful. So then my question is, okay, so we've gathered all this information, we've put it in a form, we've put it on an external hard drive, a hard copy in the executor with the will, and then something changes. So yeah, how, right? how, often, <laughs> how often do you do this? Well, you know, everybody's different. Uh, some people are well-organized like your mom. And every time a password changes or she opens up a new account, she's going to update her digital estate plan. I know you, Ma. Or those professional organizers who are listening to you on this podcast are going to do it that way. But for normal people, I would say <laughs> what you want to do is uh, update your digital estate plan by tying it to another activity that you do regularly. Like regularly you change the oil in your car. That would be the time to update your digital statement. Or regularly you uh, change the batteries in your smoke alarm. This, this is a trick that uh, it's an old standby for a professional organizer to tie a new habit 
to an old habit, right? So things don't change so dramatically and so quickly that you have to update your digital estate plan every month. You can update it when there are changes, if you're well-organized enough, or you can attach your changes to your digital estate plan when you do, when you do an, another routine that is regularized. Mm. And that's what I teach my clients to do. Right. So realistically, once per year, possibly twice per year with the changing of the clocks or something could be a reminder to do it. But once or twice per year should be plenty if you set it up properly from the start. Yeah. You know, I have a client who does it on her birthday. Okay. You know, that that's an annual thing. I have another client who does it on his anniversary. The two, the wife and the husband sit down together and they update their digital estate plan together mm -hmm. on, on their anniversary. I mean, they do other things on their anniversary, but they, <laughs> they also do that. Okay, cool. Interesting. Okay. So then I was thinking, you know, I, I read your book, I was preparing the podcast and I went and I was thinking to myself, this is so important, but, yeah. but nobody talks about this. How is this possible? Why have there not been like loads of magazines and articles and other I mean, why is why does nobody notice and do this? Well, you're going to change that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Podcast going worldwide. Everyone's going to have finally a digital estate plan. And well, it gets back a little bit to what we talked about earlier about mortality. People don't want to do that. But I think the reason it isn't being pushed so much is that the people who need to take a stand and take leadership on promoting it are things like, you know, attorneys, estate attorneys, funeral directors, lawyers, people at the bank who handle estates, folks like that, who are on the, who interact with families who ha are now dealing with death or incapacitation, right? And those are the people who really don't have the uh, knowledge yet about digital estate planning. So that's that's the group that we have to get to. That's the group that we have to market to, as well as, of course, our productivity consultants and our professional organizers, who I think have a big role, a big role to play in this. But I think it's not a, um, you know, a direct to consumer. That path is not quite as easy. I think we need that kind of middle piece in there of advocates for this. Yeah. And now when you Google digital estate plan, when I did it a decade ago, when I first formulated the idea of this, there were very few people who were promoting this. But now there are, trust me, <laughs> there are now hundreds. <laughs> you may not have heard of them, but there are hundreds of them. Some of them are very costly. You know, they're, it's expensive to get a will done, a power of attorney done. And now a digital state plan done. And some people are charging ridiculous prices for it. I will tell you that mine is below $20. <laughs> so, and if you run into trouble and you can't do it yourself, we can get you someone to help you, you know, through a Zoom call to walk you through your digital estate plan. We can get you help with that. So. I think it's one of those things that we never really realized when we all started with social media and online banking and being able to do everything online. It's, I think it's just because it's grown so yeah. slowly, but surely more and yeah. more and more. Yeah. That we're still all kind of playing catch up a little bit, aren't we? That we're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Gee, it's, yes, of course. Yeah, no, it's really taken off, hasn't it? Our, our digital life our information afterlife is huge, yeah. absolutely huge. Like you were saying, oh my God, this thing's going to be like pages and pages. Well, you have to be a little discerning about, you know, the, the silly stuff you don't really need on there, just stuff that, you know, is really kind of important. But you're right. It's really grown a lot, our information afterlife, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Any final thoughts, Judith, from you? Uh, no, I think... Um, it's really, I totally support everybody having a digital estate plan. I just want to advocate again that it's an easy thing to do. It's nothing to be uh, afraid of. Uh, you can build one. You can have one. You can secure one. You can, And you'll feel so much peace of mind knowing that this document exists, just like a will. So much peace of mind. You really can't put, 
you can't put, you know, a price tag on that. Yeah. Yeah. I fully support that. So listeners, that is it for this episode. Judith, thank you for being a guest on our show. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Oh, well, listeners, are you inspired to take action? Because that's what we're all about here at the Declutter Hub. Are you going to look into a digital estate plan? And are you going to put on your diary or on your to-do list to actually create one? And like Judith said, it's nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't have to be all done tomorrow, but put it on your radar for you to do that. So we really hope you've enjoyed listening and that you feel inspired to do this. So if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share it with others because maybe you're thinking to yourself, wow, my friend needs to know that or my family member needs to know this too. And we will put all the information from Judith in the show notes so you can find it. And of course, if you want to share this podcast, use our sharing buttons. Now, if yeah, you want- and put some contact information for me. Yeah, well, and, definitely. And my contact information yeah. in case they know. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll do that as well. Definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely add it in the show notes too. I will put your website in, Judith, so people can find you if they've got more questions or need any help. Um, Definitely do that too. Thanks. If you want to have more handy tips and advice from Leslie now, you can find us in lots of places. We have a fantastic, supportive Facebook group called the Declutter Hub Community, which is a great starting point. Now, if you don't want to miss, miss our next podcast, Don't forget to subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast and it will pop to your notifications each Friday. So thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.